and we are going to start with Shane Lowry, aren't we, Stu? I love Shane Lowry's golf swing. I think there's so much to be learnt from it. It's you know, very poetic. It's a beautiful, soft, moving swing, but generates a heck of a lot of power. The first thing I want to draw to everyone out there is his grip. Grip is really underrated, I believe, in the world of golf. When we look down at that left arm and that left wrist angle, this wrist angle that's in here is crucial, how we place the hand on the golf club. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a moment, so stick with us. But as we start to move Shane into his backswing, I want to draw your attention to two uh, areas that we can measure with Sportsbox AI, and that's sway. That's the lateral motion that we make in a golf swing. We know that we're all try trying to rotate, but there is some lateral shift in the golf swing, and this is measuring it essentially in inches. And so as we start to move Shane up to the top of the backswing, we see there's an early shift. We can see a, a sway of the chest at a couple of inches, 1.9, and a pelvis at 2.2. Again, we can see it with the blue and the yellow line. As we go up to the top, what we see with Shane's golf swing is very much a recentering. And stay tuned because we're going to talk about Billy Horschel's golf swing because it's very different. But at the top, we see this softness in Shane's golf swing. We've talked about how the straight left arm needs to be present for a lot of golfers have worked on that, but we really see a narrow club shaft. We see a left arm that really isn't straight at all. I draw a line between the hand and the shoulder. We can definitely see a bend in that Iona. And so as Shane starts to come back, I back down to the golf ball, I want to draw two points on Shane's movement, one on his belt line and one on his head. And as we start to see Shane coming back into impact here, Look at how much he keeps his upper body back and how much he drives his legs forwards. And at the point of impact, we see this difference between the upper body and the lower body of some 9.6 inches. That's a huge amount. That's him buying time to square that club face up. And I then want to draw the attention to this wrist angle that I talked about right at the get-go. Mm. We've talked about flat left wrists and trying to square the face up. But actually, we can see he's still got that cut that he exhibited at address. And so I really want to share the insights that Shane's giving us with golfers at home and what mm. they can learn from Shane's golf game. Please do, Stu, because it, it looks great. We all want a bit more Shane Lowry in our golf swing. So tell us how we can get that. So first of all, I really want to talk to you about how you're going to place the hand on the golf club. So we're going to lift the club up in front of us, keeping the club face at 90 degrees to us. And I really want you to get the club across the tops of your fingers and almost get the back of your hand here at 90 degrees to the grip. Now pop your thumb down the side. And now when I put my club down in front of you here, you can really see this kink in here. Now it is a strong grip, but it's a grip that's really gonna allow us to apply pressure and force on the golf club and not have to make us flatten out our left wrist through strike to straighten up the club face and that's crucial for when we're using that softness up at the top with Shane's swing because that softness is giving Shane that lag and load. Lag, don't get too excited because we're all after a bit of lag in that downswing that will give him some speed down at the bottom and that club swinging down at the bottom with that cup in that left wrist that now is much, much better for you, much better for your wrist joints, much better for your elbow and much better for that left shoulder to get that club swinging. So all of a sudden, I can grip that golf club with a little bit more crease in it. I can allow that golf club to swing a bit more because it's all of a sudden a little bit softer. And with a bit of luck, we can create a little bit more Shane Lowry speed owner, which listen, we could all do with. We absolutely could. I've just got one question for you about the grip pressure. How, what's the correct grip pressure there, Stu? Really great question, Iona. Grip pressure is all related to where your face is trying to point. If your face is trying to point to the right through strike, you'll invariably have a really tight grip. If you're trying to close the face, it's really going to be tense. The more straight your face wants to come back to the ball, the lighter your grip pressure is. So if you've got a tight grip, the chances are you've got a poor grip. Mm. So lighten the grip pressure with a better grip and you'll square that face up like a beauty. Brilliant, Stu. Awesome stuff from Stuart Cartwright in the Audi Performance Zone.